Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. The fucking walls are falling in on us, folks. It's all over. We got jizz on the drywall here. Which... Mine looks considerably jizzier than yours. <laughs> yeah, I think Shelby had more fun putting your side up. You know what I think he, he did? Is, yeah, I think he was like, we need a ton of jizz. And yeah. then maybe he was like, maybe not so much jizz. Or maybe that one was taped. I don't know what happened. I had a tape, a nail, a gum, a, a queef. I... When I was a kid, we I used to jizz on the walls. Yes, I remember. Yeah, it looked similar. It was it was less yellow. This person might need medical attention. Yeah, they're drinking a lot of coffee or they're uh, jerking off to the Simpsons. Something's up because <laughs> it looks like a, a frosted flake right here. Yeah, it's some ectoplasm in there. It's, it's a lot of yellow number five. Now, wouldn't that be interesting? Is if you you come to whatever color you're masturbating to. Oh. So you jizz black, and your wife is like, hey, what is this shit? Oh, that's fun. Chocolate jizz. (laughs) This is my name in high school. Now, there's a product. Yes, chocolate jizz. It's quick. All right. I like that. Okay. Count Count it. it. Um, But yeah, yeah, you you, you come, and uh, it comes out. Yeah, you jerk up the avatar. You got blue balls. Blue cum. There we go. Okay. Blue cum. Uh, we're, we're back, folks. <laughs> These are the worst Kool-Aid flavors. It's been a couple of weeks since we recorded. And by the way, we're, we're talking off air. We're talking here. Your prayers are going to be answered. We're getting a new studio. You heard it here first. I don't know. What's our lease look like? How long are we here for? We got to get out of here. We can get out. It's been six months at least. And, you know, we'll get a new office, maybe a new co-host. We'll figure it out. But it's going to be fun. Well, I went to Los Angeles, Hollywood, La La Land, Sin City. City, the Windy City, my mother's asshole, and Tinseltown. You do a few podcasts, and you're embarrassed. Yeah, they all have a house and an apartment. I, I go. I did Sicklers. I did Santino's. Santino's got way. a helipad. He comes in on. It's wild. Which, by the way, I get to Santino's. He's like, "Hey, why is everyone writing to me that I, I fucked you over?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, sorry about that." Because huh? I told the story on here about how I was booked. It's oh. booked, Jerry, and he canceled. <laughs> and then these fans, we appreciate you, we love you, but everyone starts writing at Santino, you piece of shit, hell, oh. list on, fuck face. These, and, these nerds, they come, they roll deep on the comments. I know, and I'm like, what? Oh, I don't know. And he's like, you're talking shit about me, and then he, he smacked me and oh, uh, boy. put his pinky in my ass. So, yeah, I got multiple beefs, evidently. Wow, ginger snap. But, um, yeah, that was fun. But you, you show up there, and exactly like you said, they got an attendant with an orange vest yes, parking yes. you. and Red, go of, what is that, the velvet? Fog? Velvet. Uh, Underground? Velvet uh, rope. Revolver. There, there you, you go. go. Yeah. Velvet. A lot of velvet. Yeah, velvet throat, Roy Orbison. Is that what they called him? That was it. A little, little, little rough. Velvet throat. It's a little sexual. Holy the lonely. Hey, I think that sounded pretty good. Not bad. I don't know. No, we'll Roy. See. That was more of a satin throat. Uh, but um, any jizz, I went out there, and it's just lovely. And Sickler, too, he has, a, he has an office with, like, three studios. They all have kitchens. Are you Garbage has a kitchen and a TV and yeah. a, a balcony. We got to get, you know what I mean? It's great. Some twink comes in and goes, who needs a coffee? I got donuts. You're like, you have a twink? We lost Shelby years ago. I know. We don't have a twink. We got a, we got a chuck and no twink. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, got a chunk. we got to make a some chain? changes. It, oh, it's all messy. This stuff should be hanging. I mean, look at this beauty. That I is know. spectacular. We got a whole wall here with all these these goodies we can throw up there. This is a beautiful piece of wood. We got Kayuger over there. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh, we got the Ass Man. Coco and we just the monkey. We got to hire somebody to come in and uh, hang all this stuff yeah. for us, and then hire somebody to record sound and video. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody to edit. A really and, clean house. Yeah, <laughs> just start fresh. I hear that, sister. We got to upgrade. Maybe we'll change the name, because didn't that one guy say, remember that podcast guru said you got three problems. The name sucks. That doesn't suck, but he's like, I don't know what it is. You know, you got the Joe Rogan experience, uh, Burt Cast. A bad friends. You get a feel for it. Mm. We're Tuesdays with jizz on the wall. But we're stories. We're, That's it's true. Tuesday, we're telling stories. You but a point. It is a, it is a play that. on Tuesdays with more, which we have nothing to do with. We no. never read it. We don't care. Nor do I don't think people 
our listeners aren't a big uh, Greg Alpin fans. What's his name? Mitch Album. Mitch Album. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Not really, but yeah. Then he said, uh, the <laughs> "Greg st- Alpin's the book at Stand Up New York." <laughs> <laughs> he said the studio looks like hell, which we'll give him that. We're talking about it right now. Who's this again? Who's talking? He was a monk in a in a, in a temple. He was sitting down. He had a robe on. He knew all about pods. He was a guru. Oh, Temple of Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Count it, and uh, and then he said, uh, "There's no guests, which you got. Right. We got to give him that one. We got to get guests, and or uh, we don't. They don't like it. I don't know. It's hard to say because the guest brings in somebody, but then they hate the guests. I know, I know. It's tough. You know what'd be good is if we do the whole show and then just do ten minutes of a guest, and that mm. way the guest is on the the thumbnail, oh, the and nail. the thing, so it brings the person in, but then they don't have to say shit." Thumbnail in the coffin. I like it. That's pretty good. I mean, you'll get the weird Bobby Lee fans who are like, what the hell? And they'll say, the comment will say, Bobby Lee, 33 minutes. They always tell you when they come in. Right. Man, these people are queefs. But once they hear us, Mm. we'll have them. Don't Mm. you think? That's the plan. Something should come out of our nip-nips. Don't you think, think? (laughs) Uh, But... By the way, I think the soup might help, too. Yeah, we should, Dre, you look like you're representing me. Uh, um, well, yeah, I get, uh, I did it. We shot uh, some sketch with uh, Salicuse. Oh, yeah. And we needed an office to shoot it. And um, I showed up with the wrong suit. We shot half the sketch in the park a couple weeks ago with your wife. Yes, yes. And uh, and Joe DeRosa, who's ah. a very funny guy, obviously, and um, and uh, and uh, Dave Juskow, who's a oh, fucking oh, great. I mean, oh, rolling over there. Great actor. And uh, I had to bring a suit for the pickups, the second half of the thing, and I, I wore the wrong suit. I fucked him over. Uh, and what do you have, two suits? I got two suits. You went 50-50 and you blew it. Well, it was in a bag. It was zipped up. And I looked, the shirt was right. And I just grabbed it and got here. And that's the worst feeling when you have to go, uh, hey, pardon me, uh, yeah. Sally. You want to step over here? Uh, I got the wrong suit. I'm a piece of shit. Man, unsuitable. But he's so... Uh, Chill. Yeah, he was like, "Ah, oh, don't worry about it. I'm over it." <laughs> and I'm like, "But the whole movie's gonna suck. It's gonna be a piece of shit now." And he's like, oh, "I don't care." Yeah, he doesn't seem to care. He must go back to his garage and break everything. <laughs> Serenity he's, now. He's even Steven. I don't know what his deal is. And uh, wacky guy. Wacky guy. But you know, he pops off at these weird moments. You see him uh, with a city bike and he's throwing it down Broadway, and you're like, "What's going on?" He's like, "Ah, the potholes or whatever." So he always finds a way to get it out. Yeah, he's a sweet boy, and uh, sometimes I think he's half retarded because I was like, "This is a weird question," but I go, "What's the address of our podcast studio?" Because I just know how to get here. I don't know the address. Yeah, same. And then he gives me the address, and he's. He's like, but it's not actually on that street. It's around the corner. You go around the corner, you go through a rotating uh, door, and they take the elevator. I'm like, yeah, I worked there. <laughs> I just needed the number. Like, he's explaining uh, how to get here. He's like, I can meet you outside at one and yeah. take you up. And I'm like... Well, is he a tart? Is he the, does he think we're retarded? Ah, uh, well, that's fair. That's something. But he's like, explain how to get there. I'm like, that's my office. Yeah, I have a key card, you queef. But I did... I do not know the address here. No, I don't either. But why Why would we need that? We don't mail things. It's like phone numbers. I don't know your phone number. No, nah, you got it right in the, the box. I just say, uh, hey, call uh, Fuckface, and then <laughs> it, it dials you up. <laughs> That's me. But yeah, you look sharp as a tack in this son of an onion. Oh, thank you. Well, we're all going to die. AI is going to kill us. I'm super depressed. But yeah, it fits nice, you know. I got some theories about AI. They, they can't go blue. Hmm. They, I've tried. I put it in. It won't do it, Jerry. Right. And I think that's good for us. We can stay blue. And then uh, blue moon. And I don't think it's, I don't, I don't really like when a computer can't tell you the truth. Hmm. I mean, it, it's good that it can't go blue for comedy's sake, but the computer can't tell you the truth. Like, if you go, tell me some, some stereotypes about Asians, it won't do it. Yeah. And I'm like, that's the whole point of a computer. <laughs> Not the not the not the slurs, but uh, you know what I mean. It's like you, the computer does what you want, right? Well, I think these things are gonna. Well, we can't go off on AI. Again. We already right, did two right. full bonuses, but I think these things they're gonna be like they're gonna yeah. laser beam us or shoot uh, us or whatever. I've seen the Boston Dynamics videos? I don't even know what that is. Oh. But, uh, I did the Boston Festival and that sucked. So <laughs> this is way scarier and <laughs> a little funnier. But yeah, <laughs> check it out. Those robots they like make dog robots and they go all right, jump up on that 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 and then do a backflip off and it'll go and it'll jump up and flip off. Jump up and stuff it in the basket. Well. Yeah. I'm scared to death and, uh, and get down. 
Send me the good news. If you got good AI news, it's not going to kill us. Just shoot it my way. But I think it might solve cancer and Alzheimer's. That could so be something. That'll be nice because I think I got both. But you know, it's like it's like New York. Sometimes you need a little grit. Mm. You, know, you, know, you know, there's a, that age old question. Hey, with the M M&M and M store coming in now, you're not getting stabbed. But before you got stabbed, but you might get a whore. Yes. And there was excitement. It's funny. I just had a conversation with I was with Sarah's family down in Cayman, which we'll get into. But- Ooh, Cayman. Cayman, Gayman, uh, came in me. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how because that they have the offshore banking account. That's a big place to hide your money. Right, right. That in Swiss. <laughs> yes, Swiss and Cayman, two great cheeses. <laughs> so we were talking, and, and then Coco, Sarah's mom goes, uh, "But why would you do that? Like you could get caught." And I just started laughing, and you're like, well, you do it because you don't get taxed on the money. And she's yeah. like, yeah, but you can get caught and go to jail. And I just had to cut in and be like, this is so funny because we're just having a discussion about a general discussion of crime. Right, It's right. like, but you can get caught. It's like... That's any crime. I hate this guy, so why would you kill him? You're like, right. well, I don't have to deal with him anymore. Yes, Yeah, yes. but you might go to jail. You're like, right, but he doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. It was exactly. like such a weird thing where you're like, do you have not an understanding of crime in general? <laughs> Why would you take money? You can get caught and go to jail. Yes, yes. But then you can have all the money for no work. That's that's uh, it's either or. <laughs> it's, um, I, I got caught stealing beers once at Broadway Comedy Club twenty years ago, and I, I had no money. And this guy goes, "What are you doing? You can't do that." I was like, "Yeah, I know. I didn't think he'd catch me, I, but he didn't understand it." I had the same exact thing with a cop in Astoria Park when Tom Dustin and I got busted for drinking beers in a brown paper bag. And he's like, "You know, you can't drink in public." And I was like, "No, I know." Yeah. And he's like, "You know, but you still did it." And we're like. Of course. Yes. Right. That's how it works. Yeah. We were hoping you wouldn't come over and give us tickets. Yeah. We didn't plan on this part. Yeah. This is a bummer. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You're ruining our day, you dick. But any farts. Uh, I got an itchy dick. And so you just flew back. And now, is this the epic or you got to save? I'm going to save. I got a hum dinger of a a story. I mean, this is a a one for the the story books later. (laughs) All right, so we should just tease it. I'll tease it. I'll tease it. Come back in next week, because I'm uh, road hard, put away wet. My eyes are burning. My dick is burning, and I'm, I'm on fumes. But, uh, boy, it was it was almost worth it for the story. Wow. Okay, well, so uh, I guess this is just a tease for next week. I guess so. Maybe we shouldn't have brought it up. But, yeah, yeah, I fucked up. But I got other stuff. I got, much, I got new faces. I got phantom power. I new got, faces? Yeah, or uh, JFL, sorry. That's so weird. That's what I call it, too. I have this all the time. Yeah, well, that's the big thing to me. Because we are so obsessed with that. Exactly. So where did you just come from? Davenport, Iowa. Not Montreal. No, that was before. I went from uh, Montreal to Iowa. Right, right, right. Ooh. Clean classic. That was nice. Uh, that was a nice standard. Well, so, uh, I mean, I don't know where to start. Where do you want to well, go? Well, I want to hear about uh, the Tinseltown. Well, I thought I was doing Cayman. Oh, oh, Cayman's Fresh. Cayman Fresh, L.A., Cayman Fresh, and came out not so <laughs> fresh. Yeah, all right. Um, Who, what are you, taking a vacay? I've never heard of you going to the Caymans. Well, I've gotten two va- this This month, the last three weeks, I have swam in the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Caribbean. Wow. How about that? Well, I'm trying to live a little because I'm about to have a baby. Yes. And then shortly after that, the robots are going to rape us. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they can take care of the baby for you. Yeah, that's a little scary. Yeah, a little bit. Not a lot of bedside manner on a Texas instrument. But I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe. I think they could pop the baby off. That's what we're afraid of. You say, hey, take care of my baby. Right. The baby's crying. AI goes, I know how to get it to stop crying. It screws its head off. Right, right. That's the fear. And even worse, the, the, the robot's good, and the baby falls in love with the robot. Now that's dada. Oh, you fucked me. Ah, oh, jeez. Sorry. Oh, we're gone. Then it starts fucking Sarah. It's all over. Well, that I'm into. Okay. Anything fucking Sarah, I'm into. All right. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so we went the first week of July. Of course, we were in Maine with my family yeah. for vacation. Then the end of July, she books the vacation with her family. So we got a bookended family vacation. Ooh. And you realize that each family has its own psychosis. Oh, yeah. Can we conduct a lunatic convention outside? It's It's... It's not easy. It's a lot. And uh, they're fun. They're funny. They're good people. They're smart as a whip. All these people. They all read books. Okay. Books, Jerry. Is and this, are they going to hear this? Probably not. I don't all think right. so. But maybe a little. I'm not going to say nothing too bad. But I'll they, speak freely. They consume a lot. They're smart. But they all, I, I, they all like to tell, or half, half 
to tell all the stories, and the other half just shuts down, and right. I'm in the shutdown half. Sure. So I got to tell you, it's good to see you, buddy, because- Lay it I, on me. I just went five days without talking for more than seven seconds at a time. Wow. It's one of these where you're like this. That reminds me of- uh, oh, oh, shoot. Oh, did I ever tell you about the time? Oh. jeez. Oh, How do you not be aware of that? I'd go, hey, because well, the- you're the guest. So I'm you the think guest. with the guest, you give a little extra oomph. But it's similar in my family. It, it's I don't know what you got to do to get the I floor. I know, I know exactly. Uh, yeah, you're hanging out. You're like ah, I'm been all over the whippersnapper world. Iraq. You got credits. You know celebrities. You're in making movies. What else is there? I'm friends with Meryl Streep. I've been to Israel for God's sake. You met Paul McCartney. I met Paul McCartney, and, and I've been to Ecuador during the pandemic. Wow. These these people they 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 they, they act not not them but just people in general act like uh, you, you're like a half a retard or something. I know. They're like, have you ever snorkeled? I'm like, yeah, I have snorkel. They're like, you, li- you like the water? Can you go in the water? We're going to be in the water. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I swim. They're like, it's a, it's a long swim. I'm like, I'm a long guy. Yes. I uh, swim. I'll outswim you, They're mofo. Like, We're going to jump off a rock. Oh. So there's rocks in the water. So be careful. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring me to it. How do you think I got here? I've been doing stuff. You I, were there before. But I think, I've been thinking about this a lot. i got to make changes in my life. No I, change. I do a lot of joking around. I joke about everything. So people think I'm like a, like a, a hypocon. People First of all, everyone thinks I'm 5'4". Every meet and greet, people are like, I didn't know you were tall. I can't believe you're tall. It's the number one thing I get. Interesting. And they think I'm just a like a, a four foot eight accountant who's afraid of germs. <laughs> like, I won't touch you. I know you hate germs. I'm like, well, I'm not afraid of germs. I don't think people should touch me. I don't get it. Right, right. Yeah, well, you look like an accountant today, but that is weird. Thank you. Four foot eight. They're like, yeah, do you need hand sanitizer? Can you eat something? Oh, Are you okay? Oh, right, right. Have you, have you worn a snorkel mask? I'm yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I've lived a full life here. I've been to war. <laughs> I've been in Saddam Hussein's palace. Hopefully a cat didn't walk in the room. They'd probably <laughs> tackle you. The cats, too. People are like, oh, you got a cat near this guy. I'm like, it's a bit. It's a gag. It's a bit. It's I'm all joking. Bits. People are like, you don't, you got to get out. I'm like, I am out. That's where I'm seeing the kooks. Right. <laughs> if I was right. in, I wouldn't know about the kooks. I know. People send me kook news to send to you. Is there a baby crying, by the way? Oh, All my right. God. It's hey. the ghost of future. <laughs> well, we're not the loudest fuckers in here now. That's nice. But there's, yeah, there's just ghosts. But yeah, anyways, people are like. Get an eye on that baby. And it's uh, so ironic, too, because most of these people, they're inside. They're at the computer going, hey, you're afraid of the kooks. I know, that's true. And I'm like, well, I'm walking around. I'm I'm out here. Yeah, I'm in the Big Apple here. (laughs) Anyways, I digress. So we go to Cayman Islands, which is where they grew up going. They've been going for years. Oh, got it. Which is a lot of pressure when you're going on a trip to everyone's family spot. I'm sure you've had this with the Cape or whatever with May's family. Definitely. They want you to really, you gotta, you gotta be jizzing every five minutes. Yes, they want to show you everything. Yes, and they're like, "Have you seen? Have you seen this? Look at this!" And it's hard because I, I don't, I loved it, and you don't want to sound cynical, but you're like, it's very similar to Aruba and Key West, yeah, and Tampa, yeah, and Cancun. A beach is a beach. <laughs> it's uh, it's spectacular. Life's a beach. But you're like, wow, and sometimes you're like, I, I'm like, wow, this is great. But it's not enough. You gotta it's be like, what? Oh my god! I know, but that's Water. a lot of work. That I, is a lot of work, and a, uh, to do over and over for every one of them, it's too much. It's a lot. It's so, a vacation, after all, is it not? I'm like, yeah, no, this is awesome. And and now I don't know how you feel. How are you f- feel about the snorkel? I think it's overrated. This is why we're such Come good on. buds. Well, I'm, I'm just above the. I'm an inch below. I'm an inch. Your just head is dunked. I got a dunked head with an antenna. That's it. That's the whole thing. It's nice. I like it. But here's the thing. And this is where people, I think, get the wrong impression of old Funkle Joe. Mm. I, they, everyone thinks I'm a big gay. That's why I got to stop being so jokey. I got to get mm. Invisalign and contacts and beef up a little or something. Uh-huh. Get in some fist fights. Sure. Because people think I'm just a... a uh, a, a quippy, like scaredy boom, boom, cat, boom. a nebbishy dweeb. But I need there. You can stop. Right. But uh, <laughs> I need some action. Right. I'm like, give me a rock to jump yes. off. Yes. Give me a, a race. We'll swim to the out and come yes. back. Give me a uh, let's get in a shark cage yeah. or some shit. But the snorkel, you, I, I, I like snorkeling. I do like snorkeling. But after seven minutes, I'm like. 
all right, there's a yellow fish, yes, there's a blue yes, fish, yes. this one's black with a blue stripe. Yes. There's a stingray, that's exciting. That's something, maybe it's it'll something. kill me. Yeah, <laughs> stingray. But also the snorkel never works right, you get a little water in there, and you get the, the gurgle bubble going, there's a little water coming in the mask yes. now. I mean, just put a goggle on me and I'll just look down every now and then and come back up. That's exactly what I was doing. I like, first of all, I like to swim on my back, because I like the Lieutenant ah, Dan. I like yes, the sun, Yes. and I really like to do one of these, a whooshy. Son, Lieutenant yes. Dan, I believe in God. I'm Love a homo. It. Where's your God now, Gump? Yes. So, and then what I do, Take I flip like around. I literally flip around. I'm like, oh wow, well, a couple fishes, yeah. a coral, and I'm like this. Ah, look at this. I, I, I like to get spiritual out yes. there. Yes. So what happens is, I know where this is going, and I'm already frustrated. Well, so I snorkel for a few minutes, and then I go, all right, I'm going to go back to the boat, and then jump off the boat. And do a couple of side winders and a sure. pencil dive and a somersault and whatever. Corks group. And so then they look up and I'm on the boat just chilling. And I'm Dude. really taking it in. They don't like that. And they're like, you okay? Uh, and I'm like, yeah, well, I was just there. Yes, yes. It's not like I never got off the boat. Right. Uh, look, this fish, I got it. And you're not pooping. You're not party pooping. No. They, they might think, oh, he's he doesn't like this. He's a nerd. He's got to go sit on the boat. But like, no, you're jumping off of it. I'm jumping off the boat. And by the way, I went right to the crow's nest because it was like the fishing boat in the bachelor part. I'm like, I'm going. I'm the first one up on that crow's I nest. I love it. And you're rocking. You see the whole. I'm like Lieutenant Dan again. Yeah. And so you're back, and you're like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't want to poop on parades, mm. but I'm like, yeah, I get it. I see the fish. Yeah. I like the fish. Yes. You see the fish? That's it. Well, I think that I want to get too into it, but I think you're we're comedians a little bit. Where we were lone wolves. We do what we want. We go. We we want to be untethered. Right. I'll check the fish out over here for a minute. Then I'll go on the boat for a minute. Then I'll jump off for a minute. Then I'll go here. Yes. Don't worry about how I feel. Let me just live. Let me just order my own meal. You know what I mean? I just go yes, up there and, yes. and, and look at the fish, and you feed the fish, and it's very exciting. And uh, what? Oh, jeez. Are we all right? Audio's good? All right. Oh, God. We heard a, a mouth fart from Chuck. What, do you got a porn going? All right. Oh, God. I'm nervous. You get shot down by a, a What's whore? going on over there? All right. But anyway, so uh, it was fun, but there's a lot of pressure. But I got to say, I love it. And then you get up. And this is where I blew it. We went on an all-day boat trip. Like a five-hour thing, and they keep stopping at all these places to mm. check out the reef and everything. Sure. And I'm having a nice time, but then it was only like the third stop that I was like, wait, why don't I just keep jumping off the boat in different ways? Uh, uh -huh. Jumping all that. And then after the after I realized that's what I'll just do. Yeah. That was the last stop. Uh, it was such a bummer. Damn. And I was like, ah, oh, damn. But anyways, it was still still great, still fun, and still love a snorkel, love a fish, all that shit. And they're nice. They're just annoying. Yeah. Oh, they're very nice. They're wonderful people. I love them. But, but it's also weird because Sarah feels not very, uh, you know, big and, oh, big reaction-y. So, like, they must be used to it by now. Well, I think it, it hanging out with family, of course, gives window into your ah. partner is that... I think a lot of the time, Sarah, like me, just kind of shuts down because everyone's so big. Right. And, and yeah, it's just from one store to the other. So you kind of just end up like this. You know? And yes. then you're only big and wild when you're in your comfort zone. Right, right. Which is why from hanging out with my family for a week, who I love, of course, also, but and her family for a week, it's like you just, and I hate to sound like a cunt, but it's like you, you're so excited for a comic hang. Of course. comics are so self-conscious of like, let me tell this story as fast as I can. So exactly, I, want, you guys, exactly. I know you guys are going to hate me if I just keep talking. Look totally. It. So that's nice. Yeah. Wow. It's so funny because I do this. I go to my house. I just shut down. I can see it. You, you show up. Ding dong. Hey, hugs, hugs. You're still you. And you just see your little, your meter just going down like a phone battery. And then before you know it, you're just sitting there. Yeah, it's good. Food's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like uh, Breaking Bad. It's hard, and you're like, well, that reminds me, I got a story like that. Ah, ah, nope, okay. No, yeah, that, all that funny, all that confidence, it just, doo. It really drains. So, uh, But anyways, it was it was still great. Look, I, got, I got some fun uh, stories. But So the first day, we get there, and uh, have you been to Cayman? No, no, no K. Beautiful island, very nice. And so I'm also like, I like to try to get off the beaten asshole sure. a little bit. 
and uh, I want to get some Cubans. So we ah. go to the grocery store. Now I do the driving because the, 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 they have it. It's a British aisle. Yes. So the the you know the driver's side's on the wrong side. Oh, the boy. car's on the wrong side, which That's... I have a little experience with. Okay, but that is tricky. It's tricky, but we did it in Wales, Sarah and I. Epic. We went drove all over Wales. Sperm Wales. So I got a little experience, and I thought, too, this will be my service yes. to the, the group. You want to contribute. Exactly. So uh. I'm like, I'm on it. So, which is stressful because it's a huge van, which driving a van is tricky. No good, especially on an island. It's a little windy, and the roads aren't great. And you're on the wrong side of the car, the wrong side of the road. Woo wee. And there's eight of us. So you got the whole family, and no one else is really, understandably, they're not like, in the thing. They're like, oh, did you see that fucking 30 right. Rock episode? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's moments where you're like, shut up, quiet, we yes, got a rotary yes. here. It's all rotaries. <laughs> or uh, roundabouts, whatever you call them. Oh, yeah. Um, but any just so we go to the grocery store first day. We got to go to the grocery store. And I'm like, I'm going to go find some cigars. Because it says there's a cigar place a half mile away. I'm going to try to find some Cubans. See, lone wolf, you do your thing. So I'm like, I'll just jog. Because you want to get the cardio in. Also, you've been flying all day. Sure. So I jog up there, and uh, within like a, a quarter mile, you're like, now I'm off in some beaten, oh, beaten yeah. jizz. I, I'm getting out here, and I go down this like back road, and you're just, I'm just jogging because I don't want them to be waiting for me. That's the last thing you want is your in-laws waiting for you. Yes, yes. So I'm like, I got to go do this while they're getting the groceries. So I'm jogging, plus I want to get some cardio. I take a corner, and boom, wild dog. Whoa. Just like a, a crazy side street. And Whoa. it was like a scary, like, ugh, wow. like a big gray, like, two teeth, uh, fat, limp. Like a fentanyl dog. Yes. He'd, he'd seen some things. Yes, he was fentanyl dog, and uh, no collar, no leash. And I went, go, oh, Jesus, you know me. I'm a yeah, pussy. Right, that's what I hear. So I just shot across the street. And because I, it's, I'm, I'm face to face with the blowhole. Terrifying! Oh my god! I mean, this is a wild dog, and dogs in general—they got rabies, they got sure. AIDS, they got teeth, they got assholes. Ah, oh, they're exposed. So I just go go, and I, I shoot across the street. But I, I'm in another country, and I don't realize the cars are coming from that direction. So I like run in front of a car, and I'm like zoinks, and it goes, oh it goes up up, and the guy's like, what the fuck? And I'm like wow. pointing at the dog, like, look at the dog. I'm sorry, Pedro. Yes, yes. Uh, they speak English, but whatever. And ah. so uh, now, now I got the jizz is flowing. Okay. Now I'm sweating as a wild dog, which is, by the way, the only wild dog I saw the whole island. Interesting. Like Ecuador and Aruba, they're all over the place. But this, I think they have one wild dog just to scare the smokers. You found it. So now I'm jogging. And then I see, I'll pick up the pace. There's like these two little, um, what do you call it, like... Storage crates, uh -huh. like big thing, but they, they're like big enough to be businesses, you know. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking like about. Like a temporary thing. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the cigar place says on Google Maps, but everything looks close. It was like the Goodfellas scene. It's oh. like no, 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 no. A so further. I walk down there. There's two Caribbean-looking guys, one seated, one standing, and I go, uh, "Hey, is there a cigar place?" And the seated guy looks at me. Uh oh. For a moment, and now I'm in it. Yeah. I'm like. Now I'm in a situation here, and he stands up, and he goes, first of all, hey, hello, how are you? How's your day? Oh. That's, he, goes, he goes, that's how it starts. Oh, we got another wild dog here. And I'm like, oh. He said, that's how it starts. <laughs> like, you don't come in here hot like that. And what I, th a fucking asshole. I think because it was, it's, hey, yeah. could it be in Matt? And right. I, was, I, I just was like, asked him, hey, you got the thing? Yeah, yeah. And he went, that's how it's, and it was very, quite threatening. And I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> sorry. But they weren't really smiling. Yeah. And now I'm in this little alley thing, and I'm like, what if I'm in a bad situation here? It I could happen. It's probably and fine. Behind is the dog. You're kind of cornered here. Well, so I was like, Austin. So I went, <laughs> well, sorry. I just, I was looking for cigars. It said, uh, and he goes, my friend, my friend. And he kind of pulled me in. And there was one moment of like, what if they were like, come on in here? And then yes. they, they fucked me in the ass. Holy moly. But he's, and this is where Google Maps said it was, but it's not there, and it's just not really any businesses. Yeah. But it was fine. He said, you go down there, you take a right, and it's on the corner. Oh, uh, that wasn't the guy. That wasn't the guy. Oh, okay. He said, it's down the end of this road. And I go, okay, great, thank you. And so uh, I got the hell out of there. And yeah. then it's awkward, because I have to jog, because I have, I'm on a time thing. Sure, sure. But now I don't want them to think I'm running away from them. Good point. So... I start like jogging, but I'm like looking at my phone, yeah. trying to like virtue signal. I'm like, I'm not afraid of black yeah, people. I'm yeah. just, <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. Wow. 
So I jog around the corner. I go to the store. It says cigars, hemp. CBD and it's like this looks like not a cigar shop. Some shit vape shop. Exactly, exactly. You, you understand everything. Statutory vape. So I walk in there and it's like it's one of these. Uh, the door's locked mm. and then it, it gives you like a ooh and it oh, buzzes you in. So geez. now I'm like, now where am I? I hope you walked in. You said hello. How are you? You don't want to hit that again. I did. I go, hey, how's it going, man? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going like, we been job, man. Yeah. And uh, so I go in. I go, hey, how's it going? You got, you got cigars here? And he goes, ah, humidor over there. And it's just like a thin, shitty, like Seven Eleven humidor. Uh, and I'm like, ah, this isn't what I want. Yeah. And it's got all these cigars that say Cohiba and all this. Cubans, okay, but they're in generic boxes, Ugh. which, you know, easy investigation. Right. Nobody's buying Cohiba Cubans, yeah. yeah, and transporting them into a generic box. Good point. Yes, could be a Dominican, and they're like eleven dollars a piece. Yeah, which I'm like that feels a little off. Ah, I pick what them a up. They're light, and ah. then the wrapper. Not the rapper, the uh, the band just slides off. Ooh, bad band. So it's just a fake Cuban, but I'm like, do you have any other cigar? This is it. Now I got to get back to the grocery store. Yeah. And I want a cigar tonight. So right. I go, well, whatever, I'll just buy fake Cubans, which is annoying that he thinks he's getting one over. I know, I know. So then I buy this cigar, and they're like, these are Cubans, huh? And he's like, oh, yes, Cubans. Mm. And I'm like, I know I'm getting fucked, but it's one of those things where you like people buy the generic Gucci bag. Yes. Uh, just going, well, it's a nice bag, either way. True, true, but you're, you're not going to smoke the bag. This is going inside you. That's true. It's a little different. Well, I think it's just like a regular, uh, what town am I in? Cayman cigar. Yeah, or something yeah. bullshit. At least it's uh, foreign. It's something. It's something. Hey, folks, this episode of Tuesdays with Stories, as almost always, is brought to you by Sheath. Sheath underwear. You can't spend all summer long in air conditioning. Your niece is going to have that outdoor birthday party that you're obligated to attend. And she's a little cute. But for those moments when you just have to be outside this summer, rely on sheath underwear. With a pouch for your dick and one for your balls, you'll be comfortable no matter the weather. Weather. Jesus Christ. El Nino is back by the way, and it's 150 degrees in Saudi Arabia, which is where our friend Robert Patton went and served the United States of America in the Army, and it's there where he discovered or invented these underwear, which we love. We both wear them. We're the the Cal Ripken of wearing these underwear every fucking day. There it is. Sheath underwear, baby. I love it. Maybe you don't have a dick or balls. That's cool, too. Ouch. Sheath also has breezy sports bras, bikini briefs, boy shorts. They're fucking hot as hell. They're nice to rub. So you don't have to suffer this summer. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code TWOSGAYS mm. to get 20% off your first order. Plus, Sheath underwear is 100% money back guarantee. That's Sheath Underwear. Dot com promo code twos gays. We love Robert Patton. I can't wait for Skankfest. We'll get oh, loaded up on some new underwear. Hell yeah. I have so much goddamn underwear from this man. We appreciate him. Please go support him. You will love this underwear. I don't know which camera's on me, so I'm just looking at both. I'm shifting. I'm looking in between. Either way, it doesn't matter. Get sheath underwear. Support the show. Support your balls. Hell yeah. Well said. Hey, folks, Tuesday Stories is brought to you by Manscaped. Summertime is like Halloween when it comes to showing off your assets. The same way you can dress like a slutty anything in October, you can run around in a Speedo all summer long and post photos of your well-groomed bod at the beach, and nobody can say a gosh darn thing about it. Manscaped is here to make sure you're looking great for all those pics, reels, and TikToks. Just pick up the Performance Package 4.0. It comes with the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker 2.0, for ear and nose grooming, crop preserver, anti-ball deodorant, anti-chafing, excuse me, crop reviver, ball toner, and two free gifts, a pair of comfy boxers, and a classy travel bag, which I've been using for 10 years, and it still holds up. I love uh, Manscaped. I keep one in my bag. I keep one in the bathroom. The lady uses it. She's got a bush the size of a uh, carrot top's head. It's bad news. She looks like Sideshow Bob in a, in a leg lock. And uh, I love it. I got a, not a pube out of place. I need to clean up the shaft because it looks longer when I shave it. 
We know that shaving down there can be a little nerve-wracking, but you're in great hands with Manscaped. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is made with a cutting-edge ceramic blade and skin-safe technology to reduce nicks and accidents. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code TUESGAYS. Hey! At manscaped.com. That's 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com. Promo code TUESGAYS. Manscaped, the perfect way to get your patties sizzling hot this summer. Oh, manscape. It was silent and a poop. Back to the show. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm buying the cigars, and then uh, I hear a door open, and it goes, uh, all right, who's next? It's a woman. Huh. And I look, I'm like, who's next? I look over, this woman comes out, older, kind of sexy, and in the room she comes from, it's nothing but dildos, vibrators, oh, and scrap Oh, wait a minute now. And I go, what is this? Uh-huh. And she goes, who's next? Who's next? And I had already gotten the bag of cigars, and so I just kind of ignored. Oh, I thought you were going to mosey in. No, but I, I did a glance, and it's nothing but, you know, it looks like the, t- the things in your neighborhood there, the sex shops. It's, oh. like, it's like a sex shop it, back oh. behind the scenes. Sure, I love it. But is there a table, an old glory hole, or a wild <laughs> dog? Well, there's a couple little rooms that I didn't... Oh. I love a little room. Look too much into it. And then when I left, I looked again at the sign. Underneath, there's a little thing that says sexual wellness. Oh, baby doll. And it said marital, oh, what was it? Marital help or marital spice, something like that. Ooh. So marital aid, maybe. Oh, AIDS. So I went, I think I just walked into a little brothel back there. I think so. So now I, I get my cigars and I jog up to the grocery store. And it's one of these things where everyone's loading up groceries, mac and cheese, frosted flakes, my sister's ass. Uh. And you go, man, I've been on a little adventure. You're, I'm sweating. I'm covered in bugs. I got fake cigars yeah. and a prostitute. It was w- kind of spicy. Wild dog. You got accosted by the black guy. Wouldn't it be funny if you looked at that sex shop? You're like, Uncle Rick? <laughs> <laughs> you see Sarah's uh, grandpa in there, whoever the fuck is. <laughs> I mean, so it was like 10 minutes in. I got some good adventures, and I got a bunch more stories, but I, I feel like wow. I'm on I want to push it back to you, and we'll uh, pick up some of these later. Boy, I could see the whole thing. I was in, I was enthralled. I was in the island. On the island. I'm a Cayman. Yeah, Cayman's good. Did the Cayman do it or the Cayman do it? The Cayman did it. All right. Well, man, I got nothing like that. You got animal adventures and uh, minorities, whores. I got nothing here. This is all stinks compared to that. I just have a, an overview of what I did. I'll just do, I went to Phantom Power. Got to give a shout out to those guys over there in Lancaster, PA, or Millersville, whatever the hell it is. Rented a car. Sad, I have a car, but rented one. Went and did Feehan's Pod. By the way, beautiful place. Oh, my God. Incredible beautiful water. lady, beautiful place, and gorgeous. Great time. You, and uh, you, you took my title, by the way. I had the most views in the history of her podcast. Uh, First soda got me, and then I told her, I was like, never have Mark on. He'll destroy <laughs> me. And then uh, then she did. Well, it came out with the special at all. The algo kicks up. I don't know. Well, next time I'm going in. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm bringing a dildo from the marital. I'm going to really, yes, I'm going to get those aid. views. Where do you see these views on this thing? I'm going to really <laughs> eat her out on that thing. Wear the suit. Um, I don't know if the suit will do it. Yeah, that might not do it. That's a fun podcast. Great podcast. She's a great host. Oh, she's tremendous. Yeah, good egg, good apartment. She brought. She had pastries waiting with a coffee. It was very sweet. Yeah. That's a whole other world down there. I don't want to give her address away, but that area, I never go there. Yeah, it's her and CQ are the only people Oh, down Q's there. there. Yeah, he lives down what? there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, beautiful people. There's not one fat person. They're all attractive and rich. It's fascinating. Yeah, except her. But yeah, uh, yeah true. <laughs> it's, it's a little ecosystem. But uh, JK, how, I'm just doing so many pods. I hired a publicist. He's he's running wow. me ragged, Jerry. I can't sleep. I can't think. I can't eat. And you're not used to doing a lot of pods. <laughs> no, no, I'm dying. Uh, then we got to go to that TWA thing. Who knows what that's going to be like? Don't get me started on that. Yeah, this she really upset a lot of people. I'll yeah, say that. well, she's like, it's so much work, and I'm like, eh, we, can, we can watch TV. Oh, people are furious. Oh, we'll fuck. talk. Whoa, All that right. was a fun, that was like a bike, like a seventh grader who just <laughs> pulled into the hang. Yeah, I skidded, but I, I definitely skid marked. So. Do her pod, I hop back in the car, go straight to Lancaster, and it's wild because you get out there and it's open air. It's been a beautiful summer. We had some some blue skies, and you just hit those cornfields, and it's just rolling with the barns and the windmill, and you're like, wow, look at this open range. Barley, wheat, 
I don't know what the other words. Yeah. Well, we got it all. Hops. Grass. Oh, yeah. hops. Hay. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Whatever makes beer. Uh, so great Gluten. time. And it's a beautiful room, that Phantom Power. Oh, yeah. Big time. Great. I had Raj opening up and uh, just, I felt like, uh, you, you remember when you were young and you watched these comics go up there with the notepad, the legal pad? It was like, got a special coming out, got to work on new material. I'm sorry. And they're like, no, we're here for it. And just... Throwing shit against the wall, getting feedback, listening to it, doing the second set, applying the notes. Great time. Yeah, it's awesome. And I got to give a shout out to our fans. Our fans are comedy savvy. They seem to really know and enjoy the process. Yes. They're excited to see that. Yes, exactly. And they know us. So they kind of meet us halfway on a couple unfinished jokes. But like, I see where you're going because I know your voice. I'm glad they like it because uh, that's what you're getting. You got that right. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, folks. Uh, you know, we're out of material and uh, just had a great time. And I had one of those uh, weird days where I was like, I'm going to do two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday, and drive right back Saturday night, as you do. Sure. So I got the hotel for Friday night, slept in, and then didn't get it for Saturday night because I'm driving back. Big mistake. Well, I didn't think about it because I was like, well, I'm not sleeping there. I don't need a hotel. But... They clock you out at, at 11. Yeah. So I woke course. up at 1049. I was like, all right. I go, let me take a walk. I take a walk. I get a bite. I do some uh, some phone calls, some emails. You know, I'm at Arby's eating, you know, listening to a pod, having a great day, beautiful out. It's so nice on the road because you just feel like you're free. You're escaped. Sure. Nobody can get to you. I'm at Arby's, Jerry. There's nothing better than the road. Uh, I love I'm the having road. a baby. The road is going to increase oh. 100%. I'm going to be like, oh, look at all these road dates. You're going to need later. the road. I'm sorry, by the way. This is a problem. <laughs> Well, they're getting incrementally worse and wetter. Or better. Or better and that wilder. Was, that was like three at once. Yeah. That was like three balloons that you, you pushed in a pipe. Yeah. <laughs> it was a balloon pipe. I got a fart DJ. He's mixing. He's like, let me take one of these, one of these, and boop. So, uh. Sci fart sounds. <laughs> hey, uh, I right. like it. Okay. Uh, so, I, I do a stroll, I come back. Oh, the key's not working. What this fucking piece of shit hotel? You know, these uh, Amish out here, they don't know how to run a business. These Mennonites. So I go up to the front desk and I go, hey, dickhole, the key ain't working. You got the real shit box you put me in. And he's like, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, you're out of here. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you don't have a hotel. I was like, oh, well, I got to get my stuff out. And he's like, Ugh. all right. He's like, I'll walk you, let you in, pack it up, and just leave. Because mm. it's like five. At this point. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. I get in that door. I slam it. I hit the fucking lock. I jerk off. I take a shower. I do some writing. I, I, I couldn't go on. It was too early to leave. The show was at eight. I needed those hours. So he's banging on the door. I'm going, ah, I'm, I'm not decent. You know, I, uh, this is the worst part. I climb out the window. I get the bag out the window. I get in my car and I go, where the hell are my sunglasses? I left them at the front desk. So I go back, you know, I, I got to circle back around. I go in and I go, whoo, man, I got, I'm 20 minutes outside of New York. Realized I forgot my sunglasses, came all the way back. And he's like, you fucking asshole. And he gave me the glasses and wow. I left. He knew what I was doing. But that's a little taste of the road for you. Everybody thinks it's uh, all fun and daisies, but it's a lot of lying and, you know, finagling. So whatever, he didn't charge me. We do the show. Shows are great. Whoop. Fly right to Montreal. I drive back to New York, drop the car off, fly to Montreal. By the way, what's going on at car rental companies? I don't know. It's, it's not great. It's an epidemic. This everything is so easy now. Why is it? Why are we waiting in line? You should, you should just walk up, do a retina scan, and they give you the key. I know. It's well, they're trying to fuck you half the time. It's a lot of like uh -huh. ball bagging or whatever. Because the trip, and I, we've talked about this before. I think I hate being sold. I hate when people try to. Dupe me. Yes. It really infuriates me. Yes. When they do the thing of like, well, I just did rent a car in California, and they're like, or in Vegas, they took to California, and they're like, well, whoa, Vegas gas here. You might, you might want to prepay because gas uh, in California is five eighty. So I don't just, I don't just say no. I explain to them how they're <laughs> trying to fuck me. Yes. Yes. So they know that I know. Yes. And I'm like, well. Unless I push it back in the place completely unempty, you're, I'm buying your gas. 
And he goes, yeah, well, okay. Because <laughs> you're like, you stop trying to fuck me. I know. The upselling is out of control. It's like you say with the uh, the the group one, group two. Like, hey, for $28 more, you can get into group three instead of four. And you're like... Just get me on the plane. You're rooking me. And they also do the thing that I, that I hate. They go, well, it's a pretty small car. You're going to yes, want your luggage. Yes. The guy literally said to me, he goes, it's 110 degrees. The AC on this will do It'll do the best wow. it can do. But, and he goes, you might want an upgrade. And th- this happens every time. I go, I don't want an upgrade. I want a Honda Fit. I yes. want the smallest car you got. Shit box. I like to feel nestled. And then you go up there. And the the other guy who's not in a suit, he just goes, uh, "Oh yeah, well you got a free upgrade because we don't have any more of the small cars." <laughs> so this guy wanted me to pay yes. for the car he knew yes. they were about to give me, and it makes you want to go back down there and right. smash his fucking head through the thing. Go, yes. you fucking piece of shit. It hurts. And him, I hope. Boom. Him, I hope they get replaced by fucking AI. I know, they right? Need a new, they need a new enterprise. Ah, woo, baby. I'm on a budget. All right. So, you get to, I go to the Avis on 11th Street. The first of all, there's a line out the door. It's a bunch of schmoes and schmucks all, you know, in fucking pajamas and uh, bathing suits because it's a beautiful day. People want to go to the beach, they want to go here. There's one guy in the line. He's like a hot, rugged guy. And the girl is behind the counter. She's like, I'm sorry. They called me in. It's my first day. She's she's like a super stupid lady. And uh, she doesn't know how to do anything. And people are like, okay, can you give me a, a... My reservation was at noon. If I'm 30 minutes late, you give my car away. But you... It's it's one thirty and you haven't given me a car. So why aren't you in trouble? You know, there's a lot of that going yes. on. And the tension is rising in this little lobby area of a Navis. So now she's going down with a clipboard. It's just her in there. And she's she's going, What kind of car did you have? And one guy's like, I had a truck. Okay. We don't have any more trucks. Then she goes to the next guy. What do you have? The guy goes, uh, I had a whatever. Uh midsize. All right, we got a midsize. What do you I go? I compact. She goes, All right, compact. What do you got? And this guy goes, I ordered a giant, like an F two fifty. And she's like, what do you need that for? He goes, I'm carrying a bunch of bicycles. And she's like, we don't have that. You got to go up to the other one on 43rd Street, and they'll get you your truck. And he's like, I made a reservation. And she's like, we gave it away. And he's like, what do we do? And he just snaps. And I, I don't blame the guy. This happens all the time. I fucking hate it. It makes me furious. Crazy. And it's been going on since 1992 when the fucking, you know how to hold a Yes, yes, the bit. Yes. But why do we have, you know, with cabs, you know, when we were a kid, you took a cab, you know, I'm going to call a cab, go to the airport, it was a whole thing, you had to wait for him, the guy had a horrible B.O., he blared rap music, he had a fucking tree hanging in the in the, the mirror there, it all sucked, he's leaned back 90 degrees, and you're like, this sucks, then Uber comes along, and we go, why do we put up with that? Right. That's how this feels. Right. Feels like somebody's going to come in here and fix the, uh, get on Shark Tank and give me a rental car. Well, I guess it'll be AI, and ah. then we'll not have jobs. I don't know what's going to happen to us. Send me the good news. Yes, please. Something. Avis Incorporated. But finally, I get my car, and uh, not only do you get it, but I come back after Phantom Power. They're closed, so I had to park in Greenwich Village. Which... They don't have, like, a drop-off? No, thing? not 24. Ow. Oh. So I got to park it in Greenwich Village, get 10 minutes of sleep, wake up before the fucking street sweeper rapes my mom, and then I got to get the car back to Avis, and then I uh, go straight to Montreal. Oh, buy a car. I, I keep know. telling you, every rental car story, just buy a car. It's a, it's a nightmare. The, the amount of spent I would have saved on buying a car. You could have saved on the spent. Yes. Uh, now, did you fly to Montreal? I did. And what were you doing in Montreal? So the special came out, so my agent was like, it might look good if you go to JFL. They made an offer. And you're like, all right, fuck it. I'll go to JFL. It's super fun. Why not? Yeah, and we got a little juice now. You know, you got a special coming out. We've been on some things. We uh, we sell some tickets. So they're like, come on up. And they, the amount of difference how they treat you is fascinating. Of course. I've been saying it our whole lives. All of show business is just a bringer. Yeah, we talk about when you start in comedy, like if you bring ten people, you can get on stage, and it remains that the rest of your life. Boy, that is lunch. That's big. You hear that, new comics kids out there? Yeah, yeah, hacks. That's big. You got to bring the people, and it's so funny because you're doing the same gig. Yes, I always feel it's like 
you, you come to uh, whatever the funny funny butthole yeah. in uh, Des Moines, and then they go, yeah, yeah, here's your fucking money. <laughs> you don't get to bring an opener. You're in the shitty hotel, and yes. you get four chicken wings and whatever. You get the order on that side of the menu and two drinks. Yeah, and then you sell tickets. I'm still doing the same work. I'm the I same know. guy. Same guy, same cut, the funny butthole. That club stinks. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It, it's true. You're the same guy. Like I don't want to give any names away, but the Netflix people are like, "We're taking you to dinner," and all. I'm like, "You didn't even know my name oh, two months ago." But it's a capitalist society, yes, yes. and uh, you know, it's a, it's a frustrating thing, and that's it, the way it goes. It's fa- I literally remember this is how psycho I am. I told a zinger when they don't know me, and no one laughed. I told the zinger last week, and they're dying. Of course, same they all joke. Fall on the ground, and uh... <laughs> yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Well, I'll say that I think I've said this before, but I said this. I was talking to Colin Quinn one time about your boy Seinfeld, mm. and I was like, boy, sometimes he comes off a little snippy to a lot of people. Sure, that's no news. And uh, Colin says, well, to be fair, he is like that to everybody. He's the same to everybody. Ah. Which uh, he's like, he'll talk to Steven Spielberg like that, he'll talk to the doorman like that or whatever. So it's good to know that at Consistent. least some people are just like, this is who I am. Yeah, yeah. Other people are like, oh, hi, Mr. <laughs> Scooby-Doo. I yeah. can't believe you're here. And then you go, hey, what are you doing here? Yeah, shitty pup, get yeah. that back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've, I've been shitty pup for years, and all of a sudden I'm shooby doo, and it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, well, it's exciting. It's exciting, and I guess you got to take it when you can get it because we'll be back to shooby doo before you know it. Yeah, uh, if, if more wallpaper keeps falling down. No, shooby doo is good. Ship oh, pop right. is bad. Ship pup, you're right. I can't keep up with my shoes and ships and shops. All right, I'm so. I'm shitting shoes. <laughs> uh, so. Montreal was awesome. Uh, went and got sushi with Brian Simpson. We had a great time. Sushi by scratch or from scratch was incredible. One of these places with only 10, you only get 10 people in at a time. Oh. And he got us in, and it was fucking fascinating. Sounds like my sister. Uh, my- yeah, it smelled like fish. And uh, the shows were great. We had a great moment with Sam. Well, first, let me talk about the real. Yeah, he was up there. He was up there. Oh, and he goes, "I'm I doing, Sam. I'm doing this theater. You want to open? The place will go nuts because we're friends." And yeah. I go, "Sure." So I come out as a secret guest, and they're like, "Ah, you're here, whatever." You know, they like to see a pair. Like they love a pair. If you came out on one of my shows, or came out of the closet, or whatever, or vice versa, uh-huh. they they shit themselves. It's very exciting. It's fun. Like we tried in Seattle, but I had a campfire. Ah, the campfire. You and Gillis both. Oh, I fucked yeah. up. I can't get you out of a cigar moment. It's a camp. If campfire, cigar, and a child, forget about it. That's why I'm going to quit comedy in a few months. I, I, I figured. Plus AI. It'll uh. be a smooth transition. But, you know, it's also funny, too, because uh, when you start adding up the steps, I'll have to put pants on, get in the car, put GPS, find the venue, park the car at the venue, find the back door. You'll be on, you know, it's it's a lot. And it's the social aspect. Yes. I'm going to have to meet the tour manager yes. and talk to the door guy. Oh, yeah, well, it's a lot of fun. If I could just vaporize to you or whatever you call it. Teleport. And just be next to you and go, hey, what's up, you fucking homo? Perfect. Woo. It's a uh, hot. And then you're also... When you're guesting at somebody else's show, you're at the door going, you're not on the list. Well, he probably forgot to put me on. Right, I swear to God. Right. And then the people are in line. They're going, is that Joe Lit? Why is he? Yes, and you're like, no, hey, that's yeah, thing. sorry. So, <laughs> and so true. Uh, parking and the kooks. So you just once you're sitting by that fire yeah, and you're telling some stories, you just, woo. I'm I in. know. It's, it's hard to get off of that. I don't want to go too long here. So just keep me posted. Uh, so we do this show. The reason I, I went up there was this big thing called uh, Surrounded. This is the me- the show Meta puts on, and Meta's Facebook, and they have zillions of dollars, so they pay very well. Okay. Like Soder did it with me, and he's like, I flew in today, I'm doing the show, and I'm flying out tonight. I'm wow. Like, wow, that, that'll let you know how well it pays. Right. So it's a great hang, though. It's Rosebud, it's Soder, it's Sam, it's Annie Letterman, it's uh, Felipe Esparza, and all these wow. fun fun people, fun group, fun hang, Lil Rel's hosting. And the whole show is, it's a circular stage with an audience all around you. You stand in the middle. Hang on. You stand in the middle and do crowd work the whole time. Because we're in a fucking crowd work boom. Everybody loves crowd work. We We got to do it. So it looks great. You know, it's meta. It's all expensive and fancy. And they're paying well. And you go in the middle and you they, they give us a tour or a rehearsal. And they go, you can't. Right before the show, they go, PG-13, and you go, oh, geez, I'm doing crowd work here. 
What, what am I going to say? Hey, you nerd. Right. What are you guys married and in love? That's nice. You know, so PG-13, and you can't mention Facebook. You can't mention Zuckerberg. All right. All right. So already you got some uh, leash. Yes. Uh, so you go, okay, I'll try. And then I went out there. Some lady had cleavage. I went, nice tits right away. I couldn't help it because you're, you're up. It's a knife fight. You're up against the cliff, and you're... You, you, you don't know what to do. The cameras are on you. The audience is staring at you. You can't go do any bits. You just got to... And then I you know, I did a black guy thing. That got weird. Lil Rel was hosting in the circle. And I, my first line was, wow, with him up here, it looked like an auction. And just... Oh, boy. I mean, everybody was like, what the hell? Who is this? I mean, it was appalling. I was I was digging out of a manure hole for 20 minutes. Oh, jeez. It was so bad that they left me on stage. Because they needed footage. Right, right. They couldn't get any footage. So I was supposed to do 15. I ended up doing like 26. And they're like, leave them up there. We got nothing out of this. Oh, God. They couldn't use any of it. So what? It goes on Canadian television? No, it goes on the, the VR world. It's in the metal universe. Oh, God. So no one will see it, except for some weirdos oh, in Dubai. I hate the meta and the. Uh, I'm so scared. And I don't like being mean. So I'll be like, whoa, are you guys dating? And the guy's like, yeah, this is my wife. And I'm like, oh, yeah. She's pretty. You know, I don't want to be like, yeah, you, you, she's better than you, bitch. Right. I don't know. I just, it's a weird, it's not It's not for us or no. me. No, no. Um, and I kind of showed that I was melting down, and you could see the producer was like, oh, this is bad. I thought he was like a pro. And I'm like, uh, uh, I got nothing. Uh, what, what do you do? Ah, uh, shit, this sucks. I was doing a lot of that. It was bad. But you get the check, though. That's I got nice. the check. I got the check. But, uh, God, I hate that feeling when it's like, yeah, hey, we're all doing this thing. It's yeah. got to be fun. And then you eat a bag of cheese, and you're like, well, I'm fucked. Big bag of cheese, and the, the TV's on in the green room. Every comic is watching, and I came back, and it was one of those, like, whoa, how about that Jonah Hill? That was weird, huh? You know, they wouldn't look at me in the eye, and it, oh. Oh, it was so bad. And I had to go first, so everybody got to watch me get thrown to the wolves, and then they, they learned from it. So everybody killed Soda, Annihilated, Rosebud, Murdered, Sam did great, uh, Felipe killed, Annie did great, because she doesn't, she's like, ma'am, you have you have a mustache, you know? It's like, she has no shame in that. No tact. Yes, yes. Or so got tact. I don't know if that was the right word. I don't know about tact. Yeah, uh, tact isn't right. No uh, qualms. Yeah, qualms. No uh, remorse. No filter. No uh, tits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> career. Who knows? But uh, she did great. And I was just, uh, it was a bad night. You're like, ah, oh, man, I'm, I'm like doing well in comedy. And then that just brings you right back down. You yeah, know? Of course. Well, it's all, all kinds of humbling activities happening in this biz. Humble pie. This business is going to end because of AI, the robots. Ah, ah. I'd like to see a robot do crowd work. <laughs> It'll be better than mine, I'll tell you that. But uh, it was open bar at this uh, this gig. So oh, that's I, nice. I hit the sauce pretty hard. I gave Sam a couple lines. They all bombed. And then uh, Sam, we did Sam's show the next night. Did, got the pop, walked out. Me and Sam do a little bumping mics thing at the end. Oh, fun. It was fun. And did it you kinda, actually bump the mics? Nah, we didn't want to steal it. Thank Christ. But... We didn't want to, we was kind of fizzling out because, you know, it was like, all right, we've been up here a while and we're like, okay, this is getting awkward. We're in a big giant theater. We're kind of, uh, and then out walks Brad Williams. Oh. A gift from the comedy gods. Two and a half men. <laughs> I should have said that. <laughs> Out walks Brad Williams, and it was like the whole thing was rejuvenated. It was a it was a comedy miracle. It was uh, when you need a lifeline, they threw us a midget. Wow, that's fun. It was great. We, I said, "Would you come to the doggy door?" Hey, that went over your head. Small world. I mean, we're going straight to town. Oh, that's fun. He's a good kid. Great guy and super funny and uh, big head. I mean, just a good egg. Wow, that's great. Man, I wish I was there. I love Montreal. I love the party. I love the festivals. And uh, that sounds like a good time. Beautiful city, too. I did Tom Papa's podcast. And he goes, come to my hotel. We'll do it in my uh, my room. And I was like, sure. And you realize he's so, so much smarter than us. He's a sophisticated guy. Absolutely. He's staying in old Montreal. I love old Montreal. Oh, my God. God, the city, the, the the buildings, the roads are cobblestone. The women are beautiful. Everybody's stylish and sunglasses and flowy outfits. And you're like, why am I not here? Why am I just in the double tree like every other chooch? I say it all the time. I went to Montreal 20 times before I ever went to old Montreal. And I felt like I'm an idiot. I'm like, yes. oh, I've never been to this city. Yes. It's the best part. It's like going to it the is. not going to the French Quarter or something. Not to say the French Quarter is the best part, but you got to see it. Exactly. Okay. So 
Just had a great day last night. I hosted some uh, improv show at Club Soda. Don't you love Club Soda? I love Club Soda. I great. love Dance Soda and Club Soda. Yeah, <laughs> great venue. And, uh, you know, Bert got Comedian of the Year, and uh, Felipe's on it, Neil Brennan, Fortune Feimster, Donnell Raleigh. It was just a great time, and, yeah, I had a blast. And then I flew straight from there back home. And then the saga starts, but we'll save that. We're teasing the saga. People are going to be mad about the tease. They hate yeah, the tease. Yeah, they hate the tease. But, you know, the saga will come. Uh, saga to me. Tease is pain. All right, well, so let me let me throw this at you and, uh, you know, Please, see if it, it sticks put, on your face. Put it right in my ass. All right, here it comes. Well, so, oh, so yeah, this is what uh, last night, well, I don't know what night it was. I'm all fucked up. Last night. She said, <laughs> Going to see, I think I told you this. I'm going to see them with Ari and uh, his boyfriend. Was that Sarah. lit? Lit. No, that's the Strokes. <laughs> the Strokes. We're going to see him at uh, Joe Biden. Uh, oh, what do Jamie Foxx. The Strokes. What do you call it? The uh, Forest Hills. Oh, on good anniversary, one. big couple thing. Good the, one. The big four, and you know who's opening. Seton Smith. Oh, wow. <laughs> Seton Smith is opening. Wow. Wild. He's a comedian. He's wonderful. A great guy. But uh, it's so weird to have tickets to a rock show. Yes. And your buddy is opening. That's a huge band. Yeah. I think they're friends of Mulaney's, and he's a Mulaney's opener. So that oh, probably is the connection there. That's you, you put it together. Put it together. There you go. Well, anyways, so the last night in uh, Cayman Islands, Grand Cayman, we go. We we discover we're, we've been. We have a uh, a balcony, and it's mm. like an apartment building. You know, a condo. Yes, yes. And I'm looking out over the um, Caribbean Sea there, and wow. it's beautiful. The sun is setting, which is fantastic. And finally, I found real Cubans, by the way. Oh, started smoking that, which are not cheap. They're like thirty five bucks a fucking cigar. Oh, okay, that's something. But it felt good, so I'm smoking cigars, watching the sunset, and there's like a little cove where you could just kind of sit. It's almost like Jaws, like a cove you could just kind of chill in. Yeah. And and then there's like an opening, and you can go out into the open ocean. Then there's a reef, so you can swim from our hotel. You just swim out to the reef, snorkel, whatever. Mm. And there's also a big floaty like couch thing. It's just like a flotation thing. Okay, they just leave it out there. They leave it out there. I think if you go to the reef, it's somewhere to take a break. Uh-huh. But also, it's fun to play on. So the sure. last night we started climbing up on it and fucking pushing each other off and jumping off. And like I said earlier, I like something to jump off of. Yes, yes. Give me a jump off. Well, if you commit suicide, we know how you're going to do it. That is how I'll do it. That or a gun. Maybe I'll do all of them. I might Ooh. shoot myself in the head while jumping off a bridge. I love it. With the tailpipe in my ass. Yeah. But um, so we're swimming out there. We got the we got a noodle, which is fun. By the way, a pool noodle, mm. when I was a kid, I thought it was just for hitting your friends in the face. Sure, sure. You get it wet and you hit each other. It was a great sound. But I never realized the utilization of a noodle. No noodle. You go between the legs. It goes all the way up your back, and you can just float. Plus, oh. it looks like a dick. You got the thing. Is that right? You can sit on it. You can swim on it. You put it across your belly. You just swim. What? It's unbelievable. I didn't know that. It's way better than a life jacket. What? It's unbelievable. Why don't they throw noodles around? Noodles are good. I, I never... This literally was like... The, my. I, I broke the noodle barrier. I'd never yeah. done this. This is noodle to me. Get it? Get it like this where it's a dick and then it comes up underneath all the way up your back and you can just sit all day what? long. What? This is fascinating. I mean, it must feel nice on the lady parts, too. Oh, it's delightful. And it's easier. Like, if you're swimming a long distance snorkeling, you want to have a jacket on in case you get far from the, uh, sure. the thing. But a noodle... Much easier to swim. Wow, it's it's more freeing. Yes, you just yes. Get the little noodle, and you're like, if I, because you know, it's dangerous out there. You cramp up, whatever it is. Yeah. But a noodle is just so much more. Uh, what yeah, you call it? liberating. Loose. Yeah. Okay. And so I love the noodle, but that's just a total side note. So, anyways, we go out there, and as we're we, sunset. Um, Sarah's sister and brother are already out there. Sarah and I are joining. And as we scooch through the cove, there's a couple with cocktails. They're just, I don't know if they had noodles underneath them or what, but they're just watching the sunset I out in the this. open ocean with the drinks. And I'm swimming out and I go, hey, what's up there, guys? And they go, where are you headed? And we go, well, we're going out there. They watch the sunset. And I, I, I can't remember, but I was cracking wise. You yes. know me, I'm a, I'm a wise cracker. Sure. And I go, yeah, we're going to go kick these assholes off the boat and uh, make love out there. And the couple's laughing. They, have, they had a couple cocktails. Yeah. And we really hit it off. You oh. know, a quick 
breeze through, but I can be quite charming. Sure, you're charm on a noodle. So we're laughing and chuckling, and uh, we go out there, and, and we see uh, Sarah's sister and brother. We're hanging out on the floaty, and uh, Sarah's like, Joe is killing with this couple over there. We're like, Probably nice to get away from get a new couple, some audience. Exactly, and uh, I, I wanted the wife swap, but yeah. we go, yeah, yeah, well, it was really fun. And then we swim back, and they're still out there. And I go, hey, it's us again. We all just went and banged on the thing, and they're going, ha, 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 that's funny. Yeah. And then... There is a couple, another couple snorkeling, and they go, "Hey, there's a stingray running underneath us." So ah. It's like sunset. You poke under, wow. you see the stingray, and everyone looks at the stingray. Very exciting as the sun's setting, spiritual. And they go out, and at one point it was funny because the couple was like, "Did the stingray go into the cove?" And we were laughing because you're like, even if it did, who cares? Like it's not like the stingray is going to be like, ah, yeah. start killing everybody. <laughs> but anyways, but didn't it kill the crocodile hunter? It did, but I think he like fucks with it yeah, and stabbed him in the heart. Yeah, he called it a fag or something. I think if you like step on a stingray, it could be a problem. But they're quite friendly. Okay, yeah. but it's it is a little you know. It's it's threatening. I mean, it's scary, but it looks like a like a pussy lip. You it know? really it's, does. It's smooth and flowy. It's like a gray pussy lip. It's a labia. Um, so we go in there. We go in the cove, and then. Next morning, I'm on the balcony, final day on the balcony. I'm looking out, and you know me. I like to really stare at the ocean, have a cigar, look, think about life, think about AI. Yes, yes. And I look to the, um, what do you call it, the All balcony right, right ah. next door, and there's no real divide. It's just right, you can just see the people. Whoa. And I see there's three people all looking at their phones like this, young people, early 20s, maybe late teens. They're all like this, just looking at their phones, <sighs> and... Is this beautiful Hilarious. Caribbean? Yeah. And I'm like, God, I want to capture a photo because this is like so funny and like compelling to see three young people looking at their phone instead of the wide open ocean. Yep. So I'm trying to like sneak a photo and I kind of get it. It doesn't look great, but I'm like, this will be a funny post. Yes. To say, like, hey, this generation or whatever. Anyways, I take the photo. It's not a great photo. And then I feel weird. I'm like, I'm just taking photos of strangers on vacation. Ah, Who cares? That's a funny Maybe photo. they just got a text. Yeah, right. They're checking their morning email. And quick side note, and I know we got to wrap up. Sometimes you see people that are like, you're looking at your phone instead of looking at the ocean. But you're like, well, I'm, I have to work, but I'm working in front of the ocean instead of in an office. Right. You know what I mean? It's Good like, point. yeah, Good point. Like to, to, to you just glancing, I look like an asshole who's looking at my phone instead of looking at the Caribbean, but I'm actually getting work done in the best place you could possibly get work done. Decent office. So I, I renege on posting. Very, very mature, very open minded thought. I think, what am I doing? Po- I don't need to post. Then I take my bathing suit off, I drape it on the thing, it's got to dry, and all of a sudden, I, this guy goes, hey, can I ask you something? Uh-oh. And I went, oh, hey. You're the guy from last night. And he yeah. goes, I am the guy from last night, and you're Joe List. And I go, yeah. And he goes, I'm a big fan. I watch your special. The guy with the cocktails from the Cove just happens to be a fan. And I was charming and fun. He knows who I am. And wow. he's such a big fan, I almost posted a photo of his children making fun of them. <laughs> he would have seen it and been like, what the fuck? Oh, These are my kids. Wow. That yeah. would be wild. I mean, how bad was it that I almost did that? I'm Thank so glad God. I decided reneged. not to. Reneg, please. And uh, yeah, so I almost fuck. Oh, Jesus. I just deleted all my notes. Ugh. But uh, he was like, yeah, I'm a fan. And I thought it was you. And I look over and the kids are all smiling. Give me like, oh, thumbs up. And I'm God. like, oh, Jesus Christ. Jeez. The, so. Uh, wait, you hung up your bait? Are you wearing bathing suit? In the swim pool. That's the ocean. I, I thought you said you hung up your suit. I hung it up. I'm on the balcony now. Did you have pants on? Oh, yeah. I put oh, my pants okay. On. I yeah, know. You yeah, never I mentioned got... putting on other pants. Oh, like, I was like, I'm a huge fan. You're just standing there bottomless. With pants, you just assume. So. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, so he was a big fan. And uh, and then I got an email from the fella. And he said, hey, we all watched I Hate Myself last night. The whole family yucked it up. We loved it. Amazing. And uh, pleasure meeting you. And I said, hey, thanks a lot. Watch the new special. He said, I can't wait. But um, Wow. Yeah, I was. Uh, it would have been bad though if Real I was bad. like, "Look at this generation of shitheads." 
And this yeah. guy was like, well, I used to be a fan, you fuckhead. You're a fan of me. I got a photo of your kids on my phone. But uh, they're adults, by the way. And I didn't okay. end up taking the photo or whatever. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but um, There's also an argument to be made of like, hey, these kids are on their phone. Let me take a photo of them on my phone. Now you're on your phone. Take a, you know, So it's a, it's a horrible, vicious circle. Exactly. And uh, I'm sure they're good people. And the parents are cool as hell. They're drinking cocktails in the ocean. Love and, the uh, parents. And they're fans of yours. Meet the parents. So Hope they hear uh, this. that was fun. I'm sure I'll hear it and uh, it'll be terrifying. I'll lose them forever as a fan. But um, can I ask two questions? Please. I love questions. One Caribbean or Caribbean? I say Caribbean. Yeah. I go back and forth like a bisexual. Well, it's like New Orleans, New Orleans. Yeah, that's all New Orleans for me. Of course, but, but we're not from. The, you're from. Right, the, if right. We're from the Caribbean. We'd probably say, "Oh, the Caribbean man." But I feel like it's Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. You oh know? yeah, Pirates of the Pirates of the Caribbean. But then it's the Caribbean Sea. Yeah. Caribbean yeah, you know, sea. it's weird. We 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 inflect or influ inflect. Yeah, that's interesting. It is weird, isn't it? I also say Florida, but a lot of people say Florida. Floor oh, and flaw. Maybe that's a bean town. Florida, Florida. I go Florida. Yeah. Huh. Florida. Interesting. Then it's Oregon or, wait, Oregon. Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Or Oregon. Yeah, they hate Oregon. Oregon. Oregon, Oregon. And then the Spokane, Spokane. They hate the Spokane. And then there's Toronto, Toronto. Yes. Okay. Well, we really limped to the finish line All here. Right. Wait, what was the other question? Well, the other question is Cuban. All it's cracked up to be or... Just uh, it's all branding. Well, I think it's the excitement of the. This is what I've been told by many cigar experts. I'm a cigar smoker, but I'm no expert. I'm no expert on anything. But the I think what it, we've really it used to be a bigger deal. But I think Nicaragua, Nicaragua, same thing. Ah. They figured out the thing. They know how to make it. Like I think maybe the top shelf expert. To, but to me, it's the same as like. Johnny Walker Blue and Johnny ah, Walker Red. It's right, like, right. who really yes, is tasting yes. it and being like, I can do, I know. that, But I think, like... It's the allure of the uh, the illegal, the, the hard to get. Yeah, it's exciting. And Cohiba itself is, like, the highest, which I can't even afford. It was, like, 125 bucks for a fucking Cohiba. Damn. But, um, so, yeah, I, I noticed the difference between a, a shitty cigar and a good cigar, but I don't know the difference between a good cigar and a great cigar. Got it. If that makes sense. All right. Well, but uh, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Yeah, but sometimes it's a big brown fucking dick. George Carlin. Carlin. Hey, we got a Toronto over the finish line, and we did it. But uh, I got some big plugs coming Plug up. Plug my asshole. August 18th. That's the date. It's soon. Friday night, which we're doing a Friday night. I heard that you know now Tuesday's the night to release, but... I didn't know that, ah. so I'm doing the wrong night. So I got a nice excuse when this thing bombs. Friday night, August 18th, new special on my YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed. If you could watch the night of, that would be helpful because it's all about that fucking algorithm. It really is. And make sure you comment and get it going. It'll be fun. And uh, Mindful Metal Jacket is back, finally, after whatever. A lot of nice notes. I did one with Karen Fian. There you go. Which was great. That got The first one was with Luke Monis, who's fucking hilarious. Oh, I'll so talk about funny. him on the next episode. Love the moan. And uh, that was a great episode. And then we did one with Karen, which gets uh, pretty spicy. Ooh, well, you guys can really get into the sexual stuff without being touchy it's the beautiful thing about being married and yes. uh, you know you just go yeah well whatever why don't you blow me you right. fucking whatever but uh it was a great conversation a lot of laughs and there's another episode and siobhan is on this week so and i got some big guests coming up which is exciting so make sure you subscribe to my youtube and uh providence comedy connection this weekend next weekend portland oregon oh, helium oh nice club and then dallas i think the week after that nashville in september DC improv in a couple Damn, of weeks. Damn, Zanies yeah. in DC. That's a hot little run. Yeah, it's got a it's a good run. So uh Mindful Metal Jacket special. That's it. There you go. I can't wait. You got a title or you save it? It's called uh, Enough for Everybody. Ooh, okay. Enough for everybody on YouTube, August 18th. All right. I'm all over the road as well. The you don't say tour. We're coming to San Diego, LA, yeah, Louisville, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Milwaukee, uh, all kinds of cool. MarkNormanComedy.com, fun dates. Uh, get a mug. Check out the Patreon. The mug. Best Patreon of the city. We got a Patreon. It's big. What did we just do? We did a whole video of us running around the city. Yeah. We got a bunch of stuff. 
We had the uh, the extra shit from the live app. Yeah, extended live app. Oh Ramsey. yeah, it, ton of it's stuff. Like almost two hours long. Oh, and we got to plug the Philly Tuesdays, which oh, I believe Jesus. is August twenty second. Thank you. Yes, Philadelphia Live. Helium. I don't know if we sold a goddamn ticket to that. I don't even know if it's thing. announced or there's a link or anything. But we'll get it up. We'll get it to you. So if you're out in the the city of brotherly queefs, come on down to Helium Comedy Club. Link in the description for the show. Yeah, we'll put a link in the description for the show today. Yeah, Chuck, where are you at, dog? So uh, check out Fun Bearable, my podcast at funbearablepod.com. Newest guest on there is Alan Fitzgerald. I just directed his special. Oh, I heard he's funny. He's very funny. And coming up very soon, right before Joe's special comes out, new little doc series with Joe. Ooh, this is YouTube, too. Interesting. Did, uh, I mean, Chuck really grilled me in the other room. Oh, I thought I was going to hate it. I almost killed myself. <laughs> it ended up being pretty fun, I yeah. think. And uh, We've hopefully been shooting it, for a year. Hopefully it looks good. I think it's been about nine years, but uh, well, we shot years. we shot at the original the last special you did. We yes. shot at the new special, and we shot at the Wilbur Show in Boston. Yes. So this it's is going to be it's going to be hell of a series. Chuck's putting his heart and soul and asshole into this thing. Beautiful. So uh, make sure you get in there. Make sure you subscribe to that goddamn YouTube for yeah. Christ's sakes. Hell yeah, we're cooking, folks. A lot of content, a lot of cum, right on your face. We're all gay. Praise Allah. You know.